Marketing doesn't work. It's a waste of time and a waste of money. That's the attitude of an awful lot of boat dealerships. And the reason they have that attitude is because they suck at it. Which is good news for you, because it means it doesn't take all that much on your part to outmarket them. And that's what I want to help you do in the next hour and 45 minutes. To give you some important insights into what separates bad marketing from good marketing and how you can improve the marketing at your dealership. In some cases, by spending very little more money. In some cases, by spending even less money. Because spending money on bad marketing can often be worse than spending no money at all. That's what we're going to look at this afternoon. And I'm going to keep you awake, as difficult a challenge as that is. I'm going to start with a quick exercise. Everybody please stand up. Grab your stuff. Grab your handouts, grab your coffee, grab your cupcakes, your ice cream, grab all your stuff, and change seats. There are two rules. You may not sit in the back row, and you must sit next to somebody you don't know. Change seats now. OK, question for you. And those of you who have seen me before, you can play along. What are some of the reasons I made you move? What's that? Get you out of your comfort zone, absolutely. By the way, good ideas, good answers, good questions, get toys. And as we all know, whoever dies with the most toys wins. Get you out of your comfort zone. If we're going to get better, we have to change. And as Chester said last night, we resist change. We hate change, even when it's in our best interest. So make it a point to seek out the uncomfortable. Make it a point to step outside your comfort zone. Because every time you step outside your comfort zone, your comfort zone gets bigger. So as you're here during the rest of this conference, make it a point at every session, at every meal, to sit next to somebody you don't already know. I sat there at lunch and watched all these teams from dealerships and manufacturers all sitting together. Can you prospect that way? Look for opportunities to expand your network. Meet new people. It is uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Why else did I make you move? What's that? Wake you up, keep you moving, absolutely. Why else? What's that? To interact with each other, definitely. This is not going to be a lecture. There is a tremendous amount of experience here in this room, and I want everybody to get the benefit of your wisdom. So I'm going to have you talking with each other and coming up with ideas of your own, and sharing your ideas, your stories. If you have a story you want to share, if you have a question, if you have an idea, if you have an argument, let me know. Sometimes some of the best ideas come from you all. And why else did I make you move? Meet new people, expand your network. And why else? Why did I make you move up front? Well, you in particular, Rob. Why is it important to me to have you sitting up front rather than all the way in the back? You're more engaged, and you can see me better. And if you're sitting at a table rather than in a chair, you can write. You're going to be doing a lot of writing in this session. So if you're sitting in a chair in back, we still have some seats up front at the tables. Come on up, because you're going to be doing a lot of writing. Because there's a lot to cover here, and not a whole lot of time for us. So first, I want to explore the question, what is marketing? Who has a guess? What exactly is marketing? Everything you do. You are correct, Rob. Marketing is everything you do to generate sales. It includes your hours of operation. It includes your location, or number of locations. It includes your staff. It includes how clean your dealership is. It includes everything. And understand that marketing is everyone's responsibility. It is not the responsibility of your marketing person. 
If you have one, great. And they may be the most responsible, but the fact is everybody is responsible because every interaction with the customer makes an impact. In Chester's talk last night, he talked about the dishwasher at Hard Rock Cafe and how much he loves his job. And they made the point of how important that job is to the customer. He never interacts with the customer directly, yet his work impacts the customer. And that's part of marketing. Marketing is a process, not an event. Marketing isn't an ad. Marketing isn't a campaign. Marketing is ongoing. It is everything that you do, and you're constantly doing it. And marketing is an investment, not an expense. The people who do marketing poorly look at marketing as a cost. And when they need to cut costs, one of the first things they cut is marketing, which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Let's see, our sales are down. Let's tell fewer people about us. Now, bad marketing is an expense. But I want to save you from that and help you understand how your marketing can be more effective, whatever you're spending. What are the goals of marketing? What's the purpose of marketing? Well, first of it is to get your name out, build awareness. Who said that? The first part of it is to build awareness. But then we want to build desire. It's not enough for them to know about you. You want to make them want to come to you, to seek you out. And then the next purpose is to build confidence. Because in study after study, the number one buying factor is confidence. It trumps price. It trumps selection, it trumps convenience, it trumps everything. If I'm not confident in you as a seller, I ain't buying. So I buy when I get comfortable with you, when I get confident in you. And that's a big part of what marketing is. Helping your prospects to get confident enough to walk into your dealership, and then eventually get confident enough to actually buy from you. Now, in order to do this, marketing must communicate both logically and emotionally. And this is where a lot of marketers fail, because they market logically. Here's an important question. What are you selling? Okay. You're not selling boats. I'll tell you that much. Lifestyle. You're selling a lifestyle, you're selling memories, you're selling time with their kids. You're selling time with their families. You're selling time away from their families. You're selling an end, not a means. A boat is just a means to an end. What is the end? That's what people want. And you communicate the end emotionally, not logically. Too much marketing as facts and figures. Yeah, that's great. It doesn't mean anything. We build desire by reaching people emotionally. We build confidence by reaching people emotionally. And we trigger sales by reaching people emotionally. Specifically, there are five emotional buying triggers. And the more of these that are in your marketing, the more powerful your marketing is going to be. So the more likely your phone is to ring, the more likely people are to hit your website, the more likely people are to walk into your dealership. Those five emotional buying triggers are, number one, pride. Number two, love. Number three, greed. Number four, fear. And number five, guilt. A couple things that are really important here. None of these five emotional triggers are good or bad. They just are. Guilt is a powerful motivator. There's nothing wrong with it. Fear is a powerful motivator. We wouldn't buy insurance. We wouldn't do a lot of sensible things if it weren't for fear. And we do a lot of stupid things in the name of love, don't we? So none of these things are good or bad. They just are. 
how we use them can be good or bad. If we use them to manipulate somebody against their will, you, you try to trick somebody with them, then that's bad. That's not what our aim is. Our aim is to help people achieve some kind of emotional satisfaction or alleviate some kind of negative emotional response. So how do these five emotional buying triggers relate to the boats that we're selling? Turn the person next to you and talk about how each of these five things potentially relates to the act of buying a boat. Turn the person next to you, introduce yourself if you haven't already, discuss this, take two minutes, go. Please finish up. Okay, if somebody walks into your dealership, they walked in because of one or more of these five emotions. So, how do these five emotions relate to the act of buying a boat? Number one, pride. They want to have something nobody else has. Definitely. How else? What's that? They want the best. Certainly. How else does it relate? They don't need it. They buy to prove that they can have whatever they want. They want to show off. What was that? Sense of achievement. They want to show the world they've made it. What else? Their ego. Definitely. Pride is a really powerful motivating force. And we buy a lot of things, especially luxury items, especially brand name items, in order to satisfy our need to keep our ego going. Number two, love. How does love play into the act of buying a boat? They buy it for the love of their sport. That is absolutely correct. How else? What's that? Love of family. How else does it relate? They may be looking for love, certainly. I was mystery shopping one time, place in Florida, and um, the salesperson asked me if I, if I was single or if I was with somebody. I said, no, I'm, I'm single. And, and he started steering me towards boats that would be fun to party on. That would make me center of attention. That would make me look cool. Well, that makes sense. Absolutely. What about greed? How does greed factor in? Want a bigger boat than their competitor, than their neighbor, than their buddy, than whoever. Yeah. How else? We can never have enough toys. We always want more. That's what greed is. Greed is simply our desire for more and better. How else? What about the executive or the salesperson or the professional that buys a boat in part to take out prospective clients? Does that happen? Can that be a motivating force? You betcha. Number four, fear. How does fear play into buying a boat? Why would someone walk into your dealership out of fear? Fear of being beaten by somebody else in a tournament. Good. Fear what? Of old, Fear of getting old, not doing fun stuff. What were you saying? They're looking for the safest boat. Oh, that's a really good one. Fear of missing the deal. What's that? Fear of missing out. Definitely. And then what about guilt? How does guilt play in? Not spending enough time with the family. That can be a really powerful motivator. How else? Your partner wants one. And you feel guilty because you haven't let them buy one. So maybe that guilt gets assuaged by allowing them to buy one or buying one for them, maybe for Christmas. 
So all five of these emotions can potentially be at play. Your marketing needs to address at least one of these five. Every marketing piece you do, whether it's a brochure or a Facebook update, needs to incorporate at least one of these five emotional triggers. That's how you make your case, because that's what you're selling. You're selling the satisfaction or the alleviation of one of these emotions. That's what great marketing does. It reaches us on an emotional level. It stokes our emotion. It gets us excited or gets us afraid, worried. And we take action either to capitalize what we want more of or to alleviate what we want less of emotionally. All buying is emotional. We use logic to back up our decision after we've made it, but all buying is emotional. It starts emotionally, it finishes emotionally. Logic's in the middle in there somewhere, but emotion always overrides. So, here's how to supercharge your marketing. First, target your markets. Because those Emotional triggers aren't the same for each market. So if you're targeting spouses who may feel guilty about denying their partners their toys, who might you go after? Women, married women. Now that's a stereotype, yes, and yet there is truth behind it, isn't there? If you are going after greed, who are you marketing to, business people, successful people. Focus on what matters to them. Here's what doesn't matter to them. Your boat, the feature on your boat. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, you know what I really want? I want something with four foot gunnels. Nobody says, you know what would make my life complete? Stainless steel hardware. Manufacturers hate me for saying this, but it's not about the boat. And features are irrelevant. What matters is your prospect. What do they want? What do they need? What do they fear? What are they worried about? What do they want more of in their life? What do they want less of in their life? And how can your boat and your dealership help them achieve that? That's what you want to focus on in your marketing all of your marketing. If you pick up the brochures of every manufacturer in here, they will all say almost the exact same things. And it's almost all about the boats. What can you say that relates to the lifestyle that people want? What can you say about the memories people don't have yet but want to create? What can you say about the family time? What can you say about those emotional triggers that people are aching for? That's what you want to convey in your marketing. So for God's sakes, avoid cliches. I want every one of you to go home and take the word premier dealership off of your website. Because on all of them, I know that, I've seen them. Here's what you do. Look at the websites of all of your competitors. And take off all the words they use. You don't need them. Say something different. If you say the exact same things, if you use the exact same words, phrases, and sentences your competitors use, does that do you any good at all? This means yes. This means no. This means I need some more Pepsi. Does that help you at all? No. In fact, it hurts you. Because when you use the same language that your competitors use, you become a commodity. When we're buying commodities, what do we buy on? Price. What can you say that is different than what your competitors are saying? What words can you use? What stories can you tell? What claims can you make that's different from what everybody else is doing? What is your dealership's uniqueness? 
What makes you, you? Every dealership in this world needs at least one way they're unique. If there isn't at least one thing about your dealership that is different from everybody else in your buying area, there is no reason for you to be in business. So what makes you unique? On this next page in your handout, I've got a list for you of a whole bunch of superlatives. Only, number one rank, largest, smallest, longest, shortest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to look at this list and figure out how you can apply at least one of these words to your dealership. There's a couple of blanks in there, can you think of a word that I didn't come up with, which is fine, more power to you. But notice the word best is not on here. How come? What's that? It is subjective, it is too subjective. You can't say best because it's meaningless. So don't say best, but do say what specifically, what is measurable, what is observable, what is measurable about your dealership. Do you have the longest hours of any dealership? Do you have the largest inventory in your area? Do you have the newest models? Do you have the lowest financing rates? Are you the only certified dealer in your area? Hint, 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 wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So look at this list and find at least one thing you can say about your dealership and write it down. Okay, who has come up with one or more ideas that you can share? Carlton. Number one dealership in, in what measurement? By what ranking? By whom specifically? By who said that? Who said you're number one? But tell me what body? Okay, by Okay. Okay. So, Boating Industry Magazine, okay, ranked you the number one dealership. Okay? Good. If you're going to cite number one, you need to cite the source of that. Without a source, it's meaningless. I can say I'm the number one speaker on whatever. It doesn't mean anything unless somebody else said it. What else? Who else? Yes, in the back. What's that? Can you prove that? You're the oldest business in your area. Okay? As long as you can prove that, then you can say that. Who else? Yes. Okay, number one dealer in your market, and cite that specific survey. Always cite the source. Who else? Say that again. The only Macar dealer, Makaira dealer in the world. Okay, good. Who else? Yes. Okay. Define most convenient. What if someone doesn't live near there? See, here's the problem with words like convenient. Is convenience subjective or objective? Can convenience be measured? If you can't measure it, you can't say it. It's not real. You're not looking for opinion, you're looking for fact. I don't care what your opinion is. I know that your opinion is you're the best. That doesn't shock me. But I want to somebody else think you're the best. One of what measurable claim can you make? What can you say that you could defend in court if challenged. So here's my challenge to you. Take this page back to your dealership. Sit down with your whole team and brainstorm as many different words as you all can for your dealership. How can you make these words fit in ways that are observable, 
definable and measurable. And use those terms and phrases in your marketing. That shows your uniqueness. What makes you different? So, once you have figured out what your message is, what makes you different, and what the emotional message is you have for your target markets, the next step is to use marketing tools to reach your prospects. And I want to go over with you 23 different marketing tools that you can use. Some of these you may already use. And I want you to think not just, oh yeah, I use that, but how well are we using that? And I'll show you some tips for using each one. If you have time at the end, we can go back to any ones that you want to spend more time on. Number one, business cards. One of the most basic marketing pieces. Every employee should have business cards. Your boat washer should have business cards. How come? What's that? Your boat washer can hand them out anywhere. Your boat washer has friends. And they have friends. Use photos. Put your employees' pictures on their cards. Liz was talking last night about the brain and about what we've learned about the brain. And one of the things that we know is that the part of the brain that remembers faces is 10 times as large as the part of the brain that remembers names. This is why we see people and we recognize them, but can't remember what their name is. People remember me all the time, in large part because my picture is on my business card. They see that, they make the, the recognition of me with my name over and over and over again. This is extremely powerful and it's dirt cheap. And when you give everybody in the dealership their own business card, how does it make them feel? Proud. And wasn't that just what we're talking about last night? Again. Number two, brochures. Who here uses a brochure with their dealership? Here are some ways to make them better. Number one, communicate as much as possible about your dealership, but especially your uniqueness. Turn your brochure into a reference piece. This is what separates a brochure that gets tossed from one that gets saved. What do I mean by reference piece? Put some useful information on it. Information that has nothing to do about your dealership, but that can help me as a potential boat buyer. So what would be an example? Turn to your partner and brainstorm some reference information you could conceivably put on a brochure. Take one minute, go. Please finish up. Okay, what are some examples of pieces of information that you could put onto your brochure to turn it into a reference piece? Yes. Tide chart. Good. What else? Yes. Schedule events, Schedule events for the year. Okay, so all kinds of boating and fishing related events in the area. Good. What else? Water temperatures. Good. What else? Okay. That's about your dealership, but hold that thought. We'll come back to that. We're looking for reference information, stuff that has nothing to do with your dealership at all. Yes. What's that? Emergency contact numbers. Good. Who else? Sea tow and tow boat. Good. Safety training. Okay, where to get safety training? Good. What else? How about a different knot? Knot tying. Oh, that's great. Who else? Local restaurants to eat at. How about restaurants available to eat at on the water? Dockable restaurants. And could you get restaurants to pay you for that? What else? What's that? Local marinas, good. What's that? Boat landings, good. Yes. Fishing seasons. 
What's that? A map, definitely. Non-ethanol fuel locations. I like it. Good. So any one of these, yes. Fish regulations, good. These are do-it-yourself tools here. Fish license information, good. Here. Local lakes in the area, good. Okay, let's take a step back then and look at the first of these bullet points. What about your dealership should go on that brochure? I missed this, sorry about it, my bad. What are some things about your dealership you want to communicate in your brochure? What would be really particularly valuable to communicate to your prospect? Turn to your partner, brainstorm, two minutes, go. Please finish up. What is something particularly unique, particularly cool about your dealership that you share on your brochure, or you think you could share on your brochure? Yes. What's that? Mobile service. Good. What else? Yes. What's that? I can't hear you. Government service provider. Okay, good. What's that? Years in business, especially if it's a lot of years in business. What else? Rental boat information. Good. What's that? On the water. The history of your owners, professional wakeboarders. Good. What else? We have an emergency line for our mobile mechanic. Emergency line for mobile mechanic. What, does that stoke confidence in your buyer? Oh, yeah. And that's part of what you're looking for. What can you say about your dealership that will increase the confidence of anybody who reads it? All right, number three. When is a marketing piece not a marketing piece? When it's a buyer's guide. Who here knows what a buyer's guide is? Okay, for those who aren't familiar, a buyer's guide is really a reference piece. It's an informational piece intended to help somebody make a buying decision. It's a purely educational tool. It also can serve as a marketing piece because that education is coming from you. And if you educate me and help me become a smarter, more savvy buyer, who do I now have more confidence in? So some things that might go in your buyer's guide. How to find the right boat for you and your family. How to choose a boat dealership. Now, if it just so happens, everything in there you happen to have, hey, you know, coincidences occur. Getting service after the sale. Here's a question for you. Do buyers ever buy their boat from a cheap boat dealership that then doesn't serve that for the sale? Do we want to educate our buyers so they don't make that mistake? Questions to ask yourself. How often have you had a buyer come back to you with a problem that they had never considered? It didn't occur to them until after they bought their boat. So what questions should they already be asking themselves to avoid potential problems? Questions to ask salespeople. What's the average buyer's attitude towards salespeople? <laughs> they adore them. I like the way you kept a smile on your face when you said that. How do most buyers feel about salespeople in general? We don't trust them. Often we fear them. So when we arm our 
prospects, with questions, to ask salespeople, it gives them what? Confidence. Now they know what to ask. They feel smarter. They feel more comfortable. What's the best value? Everybody claims value. Very often, that cheap boat dealership in your district says value is the cheapest boat, right? Lowest prices, that's the best value. We all know full well that's not the case. So we owe it to our buyers to educate them on what the best value really is. What does value truly mean? And how is it that a good dealership provides that kind of value? You might include a checklist of some sort. You might include a worksheet, perhaps a financial calculator of some sort. You might include a quiz. People love taking quizzes. What's the right boat for you? Go through these 10 questions and here's the, the answer key. And again, you might include other types of reference information. The idea behind the buyer's guide is that it is a reference piece. It shouldn't have your name and logo splashed all over it. It shouldn't be obvious that it comes from you. It should have your logo on it somewhere. It should have your contact information on it somewhere. Small, unobtrusive. It shouldn't have your name and a giant headline up front. It should look like it was published by a government agency or a library or MRAA. That's what it should look like. It should look nonpartisan just happens to have your information on it somewhere, unobtrusively. But something that we give to our prospects. And we can give it to them at boat shows, we can mail it to them, we can make it downloadable from our website, we can give it to them when they walk into our dealership. By giving them information that helps them to make a better decision, what have we created in the mind of the buyer? More than confidence and trust, those are both good answers, but more than that, more than credibility, we have created obligation. There's a great book by Robert Cialdini called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And he lists several principles of influence, one of which is the law of reciprocity, which states that whenever we give something to somebody, they feel obligated to give something back to us in return. It's a natural human emotion that goes back millennia. So when we give something to our prospects, it makes them want to give something back to us. And the cool thing is that that obligation can manifest in ways that are completely disproportionate to the gift in the first place. So by giving them a buyer's guide, we may very well create the obligation that results in them buying the boat from us. That's how powerful that can be. At the same time, it does also increase the confidence and trust, all of that. So it's a powerful tool on multiple levels. Number four, classes and seminars. Again, education. Here are some places you can conduct classes and seminars. Look at your continuing education organizations in your area, community colleges, adult education through the public high schools. You can do classes and seminars for scouting groups and youth groups. And you can do seminars at your dealership. So given these places that you could do seminars, what could you conceivably do a seminar on? Turn to your partner, brainstorm some seminar topics that you or someone at your dealership could deliver to an audience. Take one minute, go. Okay, what are some topics for seminars you could deliver at one of these places? Yes. A female boating class. Great. What else? Do service classes, maintenance classes, how to take care of your boat. Excellent. What else could you do? Anchoring, how to deal with man overboard. Electronics training, good. What else? Trailering. Great. Yes. Skiing and wakeboarding classes. Fantastic. 
Yes. What's that? A Coast Guard class. What's that cover? All kinds of basic voter education. Good. So having the Coast Guard actually come in and do inspections on site. Beautiful. There are all kinds of things that you can do for a seminar. Look at what you can do, schedule it, do it. If you do it, your dealership costs you what? Nothing. Number five, your website. Here are some keys to making your website as effective as possible. First, it needs to be fast loading. According to studies, you have two seconds. That's how long the average person gives a website to load before they leave. Two seconds. Have people that don't have your site cached on their computer check. It needs to be easy to navigate. Can anybody navigate your site quickly, easily? Is everything intuitive? Invest in continual SEO. Who here is familiar with the term SEO? Okay, those of you who aren't, it's search engine optimization. And the algorithms change constantly. You need an expert, someone who really knows SEO. Invest in that person, it pays dividends. You want to add fresh content frequently because one of the keys to good SEO is fresh content. Google loves fresh content. The more frequently you add content to your site, the more Google likes it, the more valuable Google believes it is. You might invest in Google AdWords. Who here has ever used Google AdWords? Great. Those of you who haven't, check it out. Just Google, Google AdWords, and you'll see how to use it. It's very inexpensive to get people to directly click to your website. And respond to your web leads immediately. I have heard so many stories of people who emailed a boat dealership and didn't hear back for a day or two. You want to be getting back within minutes. Number six, your newsletter, e-zine, or blog. Who here has a newsletter, e-zine, or blog for your dealership? Almost everybody should have one. It becomes the, sort of the hub for your website, the place where you can aggregate all your content and use that to feed all of your other social media that we'll talk about in a bit. Your blog or newsletter should be informational, not promotional. You can stick a little bit in, but everything on it is from promotion, people will stop reading it. You can ask your manufacturers for content. Because your manufacturers all have content they're happy to share with you. You can ask your customers for content. Who here has customers that call you or email you about the fish they just caught? Or send you pictures from the family at wakeboarding. Use that stuff. Ask them to share their photos, their videos, any essays that they've written their kids have written, all that stuff can be great to use on your blog. Having a newsletter, an easy or a blog, establishes you as an authority. And if you're a buyer, would you rather buy from a boat dealership or a boating authority? Number seven, social media. There is a ton of information about social media. There's a program tomorrow on it that you should go to. I just want to address real quick the five social media sites that are most important for boat dealerships. Number one is Facebook, the largest, most active. Number two, Twitter, huge community. Number three, YouTube. We are more and more becoming a video-oriented society, and boats make great video. Reeling in fish makes great video. Wakeboarding makes great video. Pinterest. Who here is on Pinterest right now? Pinterest is a powerful medium, especially for reaching women. Would you like more female buyers? They're on Pinterest. Go there. And Instagram. Who here is on Instagram? Great. If you're not, look into it. It is one of the fastest growing social media sites because we're a visual culture. And that's why both Pinterest and Instagram are real popular because they're visual mediums. People love to share pictures. They love to see pictures. And you've got pictures, don't you? 
You got pictures of boats, pictures of families, pictures of fish, pictures of all kinds of stuff that you can use. So you don't really need to worry a lot about LinkedIn, Google+, a lot of the others that are out there. Focus on these five. These five will give you the biggest bang for your buck. If you don't feel you can do them, get someone else to do them for you. But do them regularly. They're valuable for your SEO, and they're great for reaching a broader market. A friend of mine's a hairstylist in Washington, D.C. She gets new clients from Instagram because she posts photos of her clients there, and strangers see them and come to her salon. Great. Craigslist and eBay. You're not going to sell new boats here, but they're both great for selling used boats. Or clearance boats, stuff you just got to get rid of. Also a great place for selling accessories. Again, especially last year's stuff. The stuff you got to get rid of, Craigslist, eBay, boom. Number nine, publicity and PR. The media needs stories. Every editor is looking for content to fill their column inches. Every news outlet is looking for video to air on their channels. You have stories. What's yours? What stories do you have that could potentially interest the media? Turn to your partner and brainstorm stories that you've got. Take one minute, go. Okay, who has a story that either you have shared or could share with the media? Yes. Speak up. Local youth wakeboard team, love it. What else? Making pontoons, wheelchair accessible, great. What else? A blind wine contest for charity. Does that have anything to do with boats? No, does it matter? No, absolutely not. What else? So driving, doing a publicity stunt, driving boats up and down Las Vegas Boulevard during the government shutdown. Good. What else? Ooh, I like that. Offering your boats to the media for them to cover events on the water. Good. What else? Okay. When wake surfing is brand new, good. What else? Taking state representatives out on the lake so that they understand the issues that are involved. And not bringing them back. <laughs> not bringing them back. <laughs> that would be a really good story. Yes. Any kind of award you've received, definitely. If you are one of the top 100 dealers from this and you're leaving here, you should send out press releases to all your local media. That's a story. And should go on your blog. Hint, hint, hint. Yes. Your investment in local water quality groups. Terrific. These are all stories, and the media needs them. The media wants them. Free publicity. I promised you a special report on using publicity in PR. It's on my website on a special page just for you. It's doncooper.com slash MDCE. Go to that page, doncooper.com slash MDCE, and you can download the report free of charge, no email address, nothing. Number 10, boat shows. I do a three hour program on boat show selling. In fact, who here went to that program last year at MDC, one of the pre conference workshops? Is that good for you? Did you use that? Good. I'm gonna give you just a couple of quick highlights. First, select the right shows. You don't need to go to every show. If you've got six shows in your area, you don't have to go to all of them. You can be choosy. It's okay. What are the ones your buyers really buy at? Or what are the best shows for you in terms of the audience versus the investment? Plan your sales incentives well ahead of time. 
that may or may not be discounts, that might be bonus packages, it might be any one of a number of things, but plan that ahead of time so that you walk in ready to go. Invest in an inviting exhibit. That means extra thick padding, nice carpeting, bring your own lighting, bring comfortable chairs for people to sit in. Make your exhibit as friendly and welcoming as possible. Make it as different as possible from your competitors' exhibits. Recreate the dealership experience in your exhibit. So bring your awards, bring your mechanics, bring your customers. As much as possible, bring the personality of your dealership to the show. Because one of the biggest challenges at a show is that every place looks the same. You walk around and you see boats everywhere. So bring as much of your dealership with you to the show as possible. Don't just bring boats, bring your dealership. Recruit your booth staff and train them ahead of time. This can be people beyond just who currently works your dealership. You might bring in some part-timers or some seasonal people just to work at your boat shows. Again, you might recruit customers to work at your shows. And service techs can be great at shows. Just train them so they know what they're doing. Talk with your manufacturer reps about show support. Most manufacturers are happy to help you out however they can at shows. In fact, in my mystery shopping at boat shows, the single best experience I had with a salesperson was a manufacturer's rep for Stingray. Did an awesome job. Far better than any other salesperson I've ever encountered at a show. Do pre-show promotion. Let people know you're going to be there. Let your prospects know. People have been putting off and putting off and putting off. Let them know you're going to be at the show and that's the best time to buy. Gather names for your mailing list at the show. A great way to do that is to give away something. But don't give away something that everybody wants. Do not give away a boat. Give away something that only people who really, really want to buy a boat will be interested in. So maybe give away an engine. Or give away a fishing package. Or a skiing and wakeboard package. Give away something that only true buyers would want. And once you have those names, be sure to follow up. Too many dealerships fall down on the follow-up after the show. They get all these leads and don't do anything with them. Which is why it helps to cull down the leads to only people that are serious about buying. Next, direct mail. Direct mail still works. In fact, direct mail works better now than it did several years ago. How come? There's less of it. We've got so much email now, so much electronic messaging, that we don't get physical mail as much anymore. So direct mail can be really powerful. The most important element to your direct mail success is the list. A bad list wastes time, energy, and money. A great list gets prospects in the door. The three kinds of lists you want to have. Number one is the list of your existing prospects. People that have expressed interest at some point. They've been to your website, they saw you at a show, they walked in your dealership. You have their content information, that's one list. Just actual prospects. The next list is customers. People who already own a boat from you. You want to send them different things, you send your prospects. And the third type of list is a rented list. You don't actually buy mailing lists, you rent them. Either for a certain period of time or a certain number of uses. The key when renting a list is to make sure that list is as targeted as possible. And there are lots of ways to target a list. So if you're talking with a list broker, ask them how to make sure that your list is as targeted as it possibly can be. And then you want to make sure the envelope gets opened. How can you do that? What are some ways? So put a call to action on the outside of the envelope. Good. What else? What's that? Make it a postcard. It's already open. Great. 
What else? Put a handwritten note on the outside. Good. What else? How about putting something bulky in it? Putting a pen inside, putting a keychain float inside, putting a, a flat can cooler inside. Something that gives it a little bit of heft so it's not just a regular envelope. People can't resist bulky mail. It works powerfully. So, as was said, postcards are great for using. You can use regular size postcards or jumbo postcards. Use benefit copy in your letter. Again, it's not about the boat, it's about what they can do with the boat, about what they're hoping and dreaming with the boat. Create a compelling offer. You have to give people a good reason to come into your dealership. So why should they come in now? What's going on right now that they'll miss out on if they don't come in? If they're a real buyer, if they're really interested, why should they come in right now? Could be a sale, could be a bonus time for manufacturer, could be lowest interest rates in five years. What's the reason they should come in right now? And make the call to action easy. Tell them when to come in, or tell them when to call, tell them what website to go to, give them clear instructions. Next, newspaper ads. With a newspaper ad, the headline is crucial. If the headline doesn't grab me, I ain't reading it. So, here's an example. Acme dealership, not a headline. Might be who you are, but ain't a headline. So give me an example of a headline. Turn to your partner and create a potential headline for newspaper ads. Take one minute, go. Okay, who's got a headline? Yes. Lowest pricing of the season. Good. What else? What's that? One day only. That's a grabber. Good. What else? Hold that thought. What was this? Pardon? This could be you. Love that. What was that? Is your old boat taking on water? Questions make great headlines. Is it time for a new boat? Is this the weekend you get a new boat? Here's a hint. Anytime you are reading anything, whether it's a newspaper, a magazine, it's online, and you see a headline that grabs you, steal it. Cut it out. Copy and paste it into a file somewhere. Hang on to it. Create a swipe file. Any decent marketer has a swipe file of headlines that they saw that they liked that were grabby. They take them and they repurpose them. One of the, one of the classic ones is, they laughed at me when I blank until I blank. Who's seen that headline somewhere? That's been around for like 30 years, 40 years. It's a powerful headline. Make an offer. Again, give them a reason to take action. Test several headlines and offers. See what gets the greatest response. Always include your address, phone number, and website in your ads. Best sections for your ads are sports, travel, and business. Why sports? What's that? Most read, absolutely. And the people that are reading it are people that are interested in boats. Why travel? What's that? People travel are typically active. What else? Staycations. Absolutely. What was that? They have disposable income. Definitely. Frequency is much more important than size. What did Liz say last night about learning? Repetition is critical. So it's better to run a small ad five times and a big ad once. If you're planning a one-day sale or one-week sale, have ads several days in a row that lead up to the sale. Because we forget, so you need that repetition. Next, magazine ads. 
You can advertise in boating and fishing publications, obviously. You can also advertise in local lifestyle magazines. Every major metropolitan area has its own lifestyle magazine. In Washington, D.C., it's Washingtonian. In Denver, it's 5280. In Orlando, it's Orlando. I swear I'm not making that up. <coughs> it's a magazine that covers living in that area. People that buy it tend to be upscale, affluent. They have a very affluent readership. That's your buyer. And you know that they're local. You can also purchase ad space in big name national publications without paying for the whole country to your ad because you can buy that ad just for your region. So let's say you want to reach the LGBT community. First of all, everybody here familiar with that, that term? You want to reach the gay and lesbian community. Well, put an ad in Out Magazine just for your geographic area. Here's the great thing about that market. Very often, they're couples with no kids. They have money. So whoever you want to target, there's a magazine for them, and you can advertise just in your region with that magazine. And you can customize the ad for that market. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to attract some more gay and lesbian people into your dealership. What should your magazine ad look like? Maybe a same-sex couple, just a wild idea, absolutely. Is that ad going to set you apart from your competition? Is that ad going to set you apart from your competition? I was touring a boat manufacturer one time, and they will remain nameless. And the person leading the tour was talking at one point about how important the women's market was to them, how they were reaching out to women. And one of the women in our group said, so why is every single person in every ad we've seen so far male? And he had no response. That's the importance of targeting your marketing and creating marketing that speaks to that target market. The more effectively you target your marketing, the more effective that marketing is going to be. Next, cooperative marketing. Cooperative marketing is anytime two or more businesses work together to market each other. Who here is familiar with Crate and Barrel? Who's familiar with the container store? Both sell home furnishings, but they sell different kinds of home furnishings. And they discovered that where stores were side by side or very, very close to the same mall, their sales were higher. And when they investigated, they found that the two stores had 90% customer crossover, but only 5% product crossover. They're now building stores side by side. And those stores have 15 to 20% higher sales than their other stores. So the question is, whose market do you share? Who could you market with? It doesn't need to be people that have the exact same market. It can be very disparate. I once saw a place that was a combination Texaco Taco Bell, which at first I thought was kind of weird, because when I think Texaco, I don't think Mexican food. Although, when I think Taco Bell, I do think gas. <laughs> so who could you partner with? Who could you get together with? Who shares the same market that you do? Turn to your partner and brainstorm other companies that you could market with. Take one minute, go. Okay, who could you partner with for marketing purposes? What's that? Grocery store. Who else? Insurance company. What's that? Movie theaters. Who else? You in the hat. Car dealerships. Good. Who else? What's that? Real estate agents. Who else? Restaurants. Who says sporting goods? Local Cito. <laughs> Local Cito. Who over here? Hold, hold that thought. Harley dealers. 
Good. Who else? What else? What you're saying? Power company? Boat docking. Golf course. What's that? Power sports. Who else? What else? Fishing tournaments. Credit unions. Look for opportunities to cooperate. Who else serves the same market that you do? And when you find those companies, here are some ways you can cooperatively market. Display each other's products. You can display each other's signs. You can display each other's brochures or hand out each other's brochures. You might each offer coupons to the other. You can do a joint newspaper ad. Here's an idea. You and your cooperative partner could buy a full page newspaper ad. Because that's cheaper than buying two half page ads, you each get the equivalent of a half page ad and you pay less. You can do joint contests. You can do joint in-house events. You can do joint trade shows. So we're going to car dealership. They bring their car to your boat show. You bring your boat to their car show. You both stand out. You can refer each other. And you might offer the others gift cards. So how about they buy a boat, you give them a gift card to your partner. They buy your partner's product, they give a gift card to your dealership. What's that cost you? Functionally nothing. What's that? Sharing links on each other's websites. Brilliant. Love it. Next, radio commercials. Radio still works. Best times are morning and evening drive, but you've only got five seconds. That's the equivalent of the headline. That first five seconds got to grab someone before they change the station. They need to be professionally produced. This is not the place to do it yourself. You need to mention the dealership name at least five times. How come? Because repetition is critical. So for that reason, you only want to commit to one or two stations. Because repetition is critical. So why do you need to mention the name five times? Repetition is critical. And here's a tactic that, you, that works really well. Use live remotes. Have them come out to your event. Next, TV ads. Again, TV ads still work. And the great thing about them is that you can target them, like radio. So you know the demographics of who's watching what shows, what time of day. So show boats in action. It's not time for still pictures, use video. You can get video from your manufacturers. They've got tons of it. They're happy to share. What are the best channels for advertising on TV? What would you say are the best TV channels for your ads? ESPN's a good one. What's that? Outdoor Network, definitely. What else? The news. What? Discovery. What else? Jeopardy. What else? What? Outdoor Channel. What else? Monday Night Football. And again, you can only you can buy the ad just for your local area. You don't have to buy it for the whole country. You can buy local packages of national shows. That makes it cost effective. Number 17, billboards. Best locations for billboards are on roads leading to your dealership. Understand that you've got about six words. It's critical with a billboard to communicate visually. 
Smash Burgers, a chain based out of Colorado, and they got billboards that they put a few blocks from their stores, shows pictures of hamburgers. And it just says Smash Burgers, got pictures of burgers, and it gives the location, which is only a few blocks right in front of you as you're driving there. So the most powerful words that you can use on a billboard are next exit. That's the best place for a billboard. When you're using a billboard, there are three costs to be aware of. The first is the site rental cost. Second is the production of the display. And the third is installation and breakdown. So these are all costs that you want to consider if you're going to be using a billboard. Billboards can be extremely effective if you put them in the right place and you communicate visually. Next, events. What are some examples of events that you've done at your dealership or events you could do? Turn to your partner, brainstorm some ideas for events. One minute, go. Okay, what are some examples of events that you've done at your dealership? What? Poker run, good. Charity events, what else? Wakeboard school. What's that? Ice out. What else? Surf Expo. What was that? Tailgating. Beautiful. Yes. D donation from Make a Wish Foundation. Beautiful. Cause marketing, very, very powerful. Fishing for food. Nice. Pre boat show, boat show. Nice. National Marina Day, what else? Fireworks, beautiful. Yes. Women on water. Kids Day, nice. What's that? Floating golf course. I don't even know what the logistics were involved in that. <laughs> what? Book signing. Book signing. Beautiful. Tons of stuff that you can do as far as events to get people to come into your dealership. And every one of those, publicity and PR opportunity. Number 19, sponsorships. Sponsorships can be really powerful if you're sponsoring the right things. There are three, really, there are three types of things that you can sponsor. You can sponsor events. You can sponsor organizations or you can sponsor clubs or teams. Each one has different benefits and drawbacks. So you want to look at who could you sponsor and what could you sponsor. So who here has ever sponsored an event, an organization, or a club or team of some sort, and what did you do? Yes. Sponsor a fishing tournament. OK, good. Who else? Fishing teams, okay, good. Toss that back there for me, would you? Thanks, yes. Hole in one, good. What else? Ski team, good. What else? Wakeboard tournament, behind you. Wounded Warriors, love it. I've got friends involved with Wounded Warriors, great program. What else? Homeless shelter, excellent. Country music concerts, fantastic. There are all kinds of things you can sponsor. You just want to make sure that your demographic fits and that you're getting a good return for that investment. Number 20, your on hold message. Yes. Okay, so you get people to sponsor your events. Absolutely. So keep that in mind as well. You can get your own sponsors for your events. Definitely. 
When you have a good on hold message, 85% of callers will listen to it for two minutes. Now, it's not ideal to keep people on hold that long, but if you have to, that's the way you do it. You can use your on hold message to answer common questions about your dealership, to highlight new products or services, or to mention current or upcoming promotions. The key is to change it frequently, so it's always current, it's always updated. Next, the referral program. Your best source of new customers is your existing customers. A prospect who is referred to you is five times as likely to buy as any other kind of prospect. Why? They already have trust in you because of their friend. Understand that your customers want to give you referrals. If I love you, if you've taken care of me, I want my friends to have the same experience. All you have to do is ask, because I forget. I'm not thinking about it all the time. But if you ask me, I'd be happy to give you a referral. So the key is to ask people, who else do you know, and be specific, who else do you know at your work, at your country club, on your sports team, at your kid's school, and acknowledge and reward referrals. Because as we've learned, any action that's rewarded tends to be repeated. And finally, sales training. Because spending a lot of money on marketing does you no good if your salespeople can't close the deal once people are in the door. Remember, everything is part of marketing. So train everybody in your dealership. Sales training has been proven to provide the best return of any business investment. You want your sales training to be frequent and ongoing. You want to be constantly developing your skills and your team's skills. So send your sales people to seminars. Whenever there's one coming to your town, send them there. Whoever it is, however much it is. Because anything they learn can help them sell more boats. They sell one more boat. Or they sell a boat at a higher price, they don't drop their price like they used to. That pays for education many times over. Bring them here. Who here has brought your sales team to this conference? Excellent. Next year, bring your whole sales team here because there's an entire track dedicated to sales and it's great stuff. If you want your people to perform better, train them. Include your techs as well. Because technicians can be great salespeople with some good training. If you can't afford it, hire a trainer. If you can't, partner with some people to hire a trainer. Get together with your 20 group and bring a trainer in. Or find some non-competing dealerships who sell different types of boats than you do. Get together and bring a trainer in. Every community's got local sales trainers that are not expensive, but will help you boost your sales. Build a library. Go to the bookstore, go to Amazon. Start buying books on sales. Create your own library of books, audios, videos. Train your sales team yourself. Because the more they learn, the more they'll sell, the more you'll make. Okay. I'm going to use a marketing plan real quick. The last page in your handout is your marketing plan template. You can go ahead and write on this because you can download a fresh one on that same web page I mentioned. So, number one, what are our marketing goals? Write down one marketing goal you have for 2015. If you have two, that's fine. Number two. Who are our target markets? Write down who your target markets are. Are they bass fishermen? <coughs> are they young couples? Are they grandparents? Is it the LGBT community? 
Who are your target markets? Who are you specifically going after? Number three, what is our marketing message? What is the message we want to communicate to our prospects? So what is it that market wants and needs to hear? And how can we show that we've got it? That we're the answer to what they want and need. Whether that's freedom, or family time, or more fish. Four, which marketing tools will we use? So pick these numbers, 1 through 23, and write down the numbers of the marketing tools you plan to use over the course of the next year. Don't need all 23. But the more you can use, the better. People ask me all the time, what's the best marketing tool? There isn't one. Marketing works best when there's a combination of tools at work. You can't do much with one tool in your toolbox, you need a variety of tools. So which marketing tools are you going to use in your marketing over the course of the next year? Number five, what is our marketing budget? How much are you willing to invest in marketing? Keeping in mind that your return is going to grow as your investment grows. So the bigger that number is, the better. Number six, what steps are we going to take and in what time frame? This may take you a while to, to figure out, so you don't need to do that one right now. But the last question is, how often will we review this plan? I'd recommend for the next few weeks, you review it weekly. So the first thing you should do is take this back to your team and have your whole team work on this together. Create a marketing plan as a dealership with everybody's input. Review these slides with your whole team and figure out what you want to do marketing-wise and then figure out your action plan, what steps you're gonna take. Then review it weekly, and once things are kind of in place, review it every couple of weeks, and then monthly. To see what's working, what's not working, what can we change, what can we tweak? Why isn't this working? What's working really well, let's do more of that. So you're constantly altering and adjusting as you go. And you can download Another copy of that marketing template, as many as you want, at that same website, doncooper.com slash mdce. So let's do a quick review. But rather than me tell you what I thought was important, I'd like you to tell me what you thought was important. So turn to the person next to you and share with that person the three best things you learned or the three best ideas you got from this session. Take one minute, go. Okay, before we review, Got one thing I want to bring to your attention. I mentioned sales training and building a library, and I brought with me some sales training resources that you can use at your dealership. There are a total of three sales training programs. Each one is about three hours long, three DVDs, along with a CD that contains a workbook and leader's guides that you can lead sales training in your dealership. The first one is Fishing for Customers. It covers everything about making the sale from the moment someone walks in the door to after the sale asking for referrals. The second one is Navigating Your Way to the Close. It's three hours all on closing. The most difficult part of the sale for most salespeople. And the third is Best in Show. This is the program I was talking about earlier that I did last year for MDCE. 
how to sell more boats at your next boat show. Full details are on the green sheet that you have there at your seat. Normally, I sell each of these on my website for $3.99 a piece. I bundle all three together for you today and throw in a bonus DVD for you. So it's a $1,300 value for yours today only for $4.97. So, let's review. What was one of the best insights you got or best ideas you got from this session? Yes. Your, all your employees are your marketing team. Good. What else? What? Use emotion. Good. What else? Determining your uniqueness. Beautiful. What else? Yes. Cooperative marketing. Terrific. What else? Using direct mail again. It's back and better than ever. What else? Yes. What's that? Put pictures on business cards. Good. What else? What's that? Creating an official referral program. Good. Creating a buyer's guide. The more you spend, and really the more you invest, the more you're going to make. Definitely. Marketing works. Marketing is powerful. Marketing is extraordinarily powerful if we do it right. And I've given you some of the tools you need to do it right. Notice there were two types of toys I gave away. One were the tools. That's pretty self-explanatory. The others were these little ninjas, little ninja paratroopers. What's the significance of these? What are ninjas normally known for? Stealth, invisibility. But these ones are brightly colored. They stand out. They're different. I want you to stand out. I want you not to be invisible. And I want you to kick butt. Thank you very much.